today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I became a published author and it really isn't the journey that people might think it is. It, for me, it was pretty simple. I knew what I wanted to do. I did a lot of research and that was key for me. Um, but the hardest part um, is always going to be writing your story. Everybody has a story in them. And that's great. And I think everybody should have a story in them. If you don't, you may not be living your life to the fullest, or you may just not have a creative mind. Um, I've been very blessed with a creative mind. And that is what helped me develop this, my first book. Um, in between my first and second book, I developed a short story. Um, my first and second book, however, are the same story. So they're a sequence. Um, are you coming up here? I really enjoyed writing the first book, um, but by the time I was done with the second book, I was over that story. And that's just the brutal honesty of it. Uh, the characters had ran me down. I was done. Um, I decided at the end of that book that I wasn't going to do a third book for that series. Um, I think it's great as uh, a two-part sequel and that's it. Um, I have moved on to another book and it's taken me quite a while. I moved on almost immediately after publishing uh, my second book and that was in 2018. I published my first book in 2017. Um, so 2017, 2018. One book, one year, got them both out, rocked hard. Um, I didn't have a whole lot going on um, and I wasn't driving an hour for work. So I had a little more time on my hands and that was just perfect for me. Um, now, my second book, uh, or rather my third book, second completely different idea, concept, has taken me a lot longer because in between all of that, um, I had to deal with a lot of family, I wouldn't call them problems because they weren't problems, but um, we had a lot of family emergencies pop up. Things popped up that none of us quite expected and that puts a damper on writing. Um, so that's the reality of why I have not gotten my third book out. So now to go back to the first book, writing that story, it took me maybe four months to write that story from start to finish. And that was with my own personal editing, not the editing of um, my publisher. So from start to finish, writing and then editing, I was able to rock that book out in about four months. I wouldn't say everybody is able to rock their, their books out in that short amount of time. Some people can, some people rock them out in a month. Now, currently we are in NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo, however you wanna pronounce it, National Novel Writing Month is what it stands for. And authors, writers, poets, everybody is going crazy because they set standards for this month to get out how if they want to finish their book they know how many words they need to write if they want to start and finish a book they know how many words they write and they have daily goals um and i think uh, NaNoWriMo is one of the best things you can get into as a beginning author somebody who just wants to write a book um, you know, you can always write your book and never publish it. I have one that I'm sitting on and I've never published it and I probably won't. Uh, it was the very, very first book I ever wrote and I'm really not a fan of it. So I probably won't ever publish it and I think that's okay. Um, but then with my first book, what took the longest was finding a publisher as well as finding the right publisher. I didn't want to just go with the first publishing agency that accepted my book. I wanted to make sure that I fit into that agency, that I was going to feel good, that they were also delivering to me what I expect from them. Um, 
And the other thing is I wasn't going to pay. Um, I am a firm believer that authors should not be paying to have their book published. Now, if you're being um, going to be a self-published author, then obviously there are some fees that come with that because you have to hire your own editor and you have to do a lot of your own marketing. Now, I do my own marketing for my book because that's what the publisher that I decided to go with um, asked. They don't have, they're not a huge publishing agency, so they don't have a huge amount of money to spend on every single author they accept. However, they do help you and they give you great ideas, but I didn't want to pay for cover art. I didn't want to pay um, for an editor and I didn't want to pay to have my name out there. Um, if I was going to do that, I would have gone self-publishing route. And I, believe me, I love the idea of self-publishing. So please don't get me wrong if you think I'm trying to slam self-publishing. However, it just wasn't for me. I wanted to be in a traditional publishing space and I didn't want to do it with an agent. So I did not get a literary agent. I don't think you have to. However, you may want to. And there are lots of publishing agents out there and um, literary agents that are more than happy to help you. Um, but for me, I didn't need one. Um, so I did a lot of research and I'm a romance author. That was my first book. Um, so that's been kind of what I've been dubbed. However, I'm entering the space of crime or mystery, crime slash mystery. And I'm also entering the space of young adult. So those are just two of the three books I'm currently working on. And it's going to be an interesting ride started doing a lot of Google searches on um, best publishers for and then I stuck in my my genre because it was romance I said best publishers for romance best publishers for erotic romance and you really really authors writers guys when you're submitting your manuscripts make sure you read everything they want because some publishing houses want a cover letter they want um, additional information sometimes they don't even want to see your manuscript they just want the basic information and they'll give you questions like give me a two paragraph summary of what your book is and what it's about tell me who your main characters are and why uh, give me reasons why we should publish you over other candidates. They want to know stuff like this. Some don't. Some just want to be able to get your manuscript in hand and read it. And that's the other thing. Make sure you have a completed manuscript. I know we see on TV all the time in all these movies that are depicting authors and they just bring the idea to the publishing house and that's how it starts. But the reality is for the majority of all authors, that's not how it starts. It might start that way once you've pu published and become a um, New York best time seller on multiple occasions. But right now for you as a starter, that's just not how it's going to work. And you really want to make sure you bring your absolute best to the table when you are representing yourself. So when you're out there and you're writing your book and you're getting ready to send it to publication, make sure it's done. Make sure you've done your edits on it. If you're going with traditional publishing, you don't need to pay to have an editor look at it. Have a friend read it. Say, hey, can you read this and get some technical errors out of the way? Can you tell me if I'm using this word too much? Word on uh, in Microsoft Office has done a great job where you can go in and find your word that you're looking for and you can replace it. Let's say for instance, you say said 10,000 times within your book. You may wanna go in and change a number of those to different, um, 
to different words, I'm, depending on what you're talking about. You don't want to have to say said, she said, he said, she said, he said. No. And to that point, when you have a dialogue, it doesn't always have to be she said, he said, she said, he said, or however it's going. Once your, your reader establishes who's talking, you can drop those unless you need to put some emphasis in there. She yelled at him or he was screaming at the top of his lungs for her to get out. It makes sense. You want to add those emphasis in there. But once the, once the reader establishes who is talking in that dialogue, you're good to let it go. So those are my top tips for writing. Um, for now, I am working on getting another video out about my crime writing. Um, it's taking me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I want to make sure I do an extra good job for you guys. So this was um, just my tips to you all as new authors, tips coming out of NaNoWriMo, what to do, how to do it. So one, make sure that you have a manuscript completed. Two, make sure you have somebody else read it. It can be somebody you paid or it can be a friend, a family member, somebody you trust that's gonna give you good feedback. Three, make sure when you're doing your research, you find a publishing house or a literary agent that is gonna uh, fit into what your needs are. You need to have expectations for them just as they will have expectations for you. Four, make sure you read how the publishing houses want you to submit your manuscript. It is, that is key, very important. You wanna make sure you do it to their specification and every publishing house is different. Five, if you are gonna do self-publishing, make sure you get a good editor. There are a number of editors out there that are trustworthy. They know what you're doing and you can, if you prefer, have them sign a non-disclosure agreement. And that agreement can be one you find online. And if I can find one, I'll link it down below in the description for you. And six, set the expectations for yourself just as high. You want to be able to excel in this, but don't set your expectations so high that when you don't become New York Times bestseller within a month of publishing your book, that you're just so down that you don't even want to write anymore. And seven, And seven, make sure you continue writing. Always, always, always continue writing. I wrote even through all of my family emergencies. It might have been minuscule. I may have only gotten in a paragraph a day. So we're talking less than 100 words. And that's okay. 